Henry, you believe in the importance of quantum mechanics and understanding consciousness and also consciousness is critical nature in being a factor in making quantum mechanics work. Mm -hmm. And as a result, the consciousness of human beings is a causal factor mm -hmm. and important. Can we ask what other things are conscious besides human beings? We can certainly ask the question and we need to ask the question. <clears throat> and uh, the, uh, the answer given by von Neumann's analysis of the measurement process um, uh, revealed that it was very and almost impossible empirically to say whether the collapse, let me first talk about the collapse event is associated with the consciousness that seems to be associated with it. As far as the collapse itself is concerned, uh, this is the collapse of the quantum. Yeah, as, as I say, the, the quantum mechanical state represents potentialities, a smear of potentialities right. for what might happen. And then they collapse. And then some question is asked and they collapse down and... Um, Make a choice. And a choice is made, yes or no. It collapses right. to this or to the uh, complementary right. possibility. And um, so the, his conclusion was that it's extremely difficult to determine whether the collapse occurs at some macroscopic level like a Geiger counter mm -hmm. counting, or not until the conscious experience of that happens. So there was this range of possibilities, and they all gave the same predictions. And of course, they all give the same predictions about your experiences. Then there's no way of empirically right. determining where the collapse happens. And uh, <clears throat> so, um, on the other hand, uh, just recently I was, uh, became acquainted with some very interesting uh, um, uh, data about cell biology, about chlorophyll, chlorophyll and the harvesting of light. Mm -hmm. And um, this, um, this article by Engels that appeared in the April 2007 edition of Nature, very prestigious journal. And the conclusion of this was that you needed a quantum mechanical processing with this collapse and uh, this whole quantum mechanical, in order to understand the efficiency of the harvesting of light mm. by chlorophyll, basically. So at the very lowest level of life, it seems that this quantum processing is playing an essential role. So you're scaring me a little bit. Does that mean that some element of consciousness is in? Well, that's why I want to distinguish consciousness from collapse. Okay. And at the level of the human being, there's a close connection between consciousness and collapse, and that's the way quantum mechanics operates and how we are allowed, by virtue of our experiences, to make predictions about what is going to happen in the future. At the lowest <laughs> level, we have collapse. We need it in, in this example of chlorophyll harvesting light. So, so the question is, how much, how related, uh, or how close is the connection between consciousness on the one and hand and collapse. collapse on the other hand? And so... And I think the, the, the answer is that uh, the conscious element, you see, part of the, the problem here was to make consciousness effective. In other words, it seems to be effective, and uh, uh, this allows consciousness Have causal impact. to be, yeah, to be causally effective in the physical world. Right. So it's quite possible that the, that the, the most likely thing seems to be that as the system gets simpler and simpler, the collapses can continue to occur. In fact, the, this element, this clarifying example, seems to suggest that at the very foundations of life, which is meaning, which means the harvesting of sure, energy sure. from the sun in order to power the uh, the developments, which we all live off of, which we all up live the off the food chain, the, that the collapse mechanisms of quantum theory are important, and. Uh, but you can say that the, uh, the aspect of consciousness uh, would be expected to be proportional to the complexity of the process, of the collapse process that's occurring. I see. Not a direct so one-to-one -one correspondence. So if you had a very simple collapse process occurring, uh, you wouldn't expect much consciousness. Uh, I mean, Whereas if you have a complex thing 
involving the whole brain and all of the structure of the brain and the collapses onto some very complex structure, then, um, uh, so my, there's no answer, but my guess as to an answer is that the, the amount of consciousness will be somehow directly proportional to the complexity of the collapse. Okay, that's a, that's a, that's a very interesting hypothesis, but what, what, what an implication is would be that, that there may not be very much conscious, may be very, very minimal, but there, there, there seems to be a unit, a discrete unit of, you know, pardon the expression, but maybe a quantum of consciousness in a, in a collapse. And as you get bigger, it gets much more complicated, mm -hmm. it gets much richer <laughs> by, by mm -hmm. exponentially or mm -hmm. however it works. Mm -hmm. but, if, but if the collapse is, a, is an, the elementary quantum or piece mm -hmm. of consciousness, irreducible mm -hmm. piece, mm -hmm. that would mean that anything that had this collapse had an element of consciousness in it, even though you might not recognize it as such. Yeah. Is, is that a possibility? I, that's, that's, that's essentially what I think is the most likely because Wait, most <laughs> neuroscientists would say, if I asked them that question, <clears throat> they would say the same thing that you did, but they would not relate it to the collapse. They would relate it to the number of neurons. And so if you had a very simple uh, 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 element, uh, uh, animal that had you know, just a few gangly, a few hundred neurons there, would they have consciousness? Well, this, the, the neuroscientists would say, you know, almost certainly ve none or very little, but if they have neurons, there might be some vague hint of consciousness. And as you get more and more neurons, more and more complex, you have more consciousness. You're saying it, not relating to the number of neurons, but relating to the collapse of the, of the, of the, of the wave function. Yeah. So, so in some sense, we're giving the same answer that a, com a simple thing should only have simple consciousness and a right. complex thing should have right. complex and consciousness. And that's the same. That's, but, that's a reasonable. But both the substrate people, is radically different. But the substrate <laughs> is radically different because in one case, you're talking about an actual impact on the physical structure. In the other case, the physical structure is sufficient unto itself. It doesn't need anything. There's no collapses to talk about. You right. can talk about complexity, right. but there's no collapse. And the neuroscientists would, would say that at least you're talking about a neuron, that's really the element of, of, of kind of brain function, mm -hmm. even if in its simplest form. Mm -hmm. And if you talk about the quantum mechanics, uh, that's something that appears in, in tables and sofas uh, in any place and has no relationship to consciousness. Yeah, and the, the argument against that is that You've got to look at the dynamics, and already quantum mechanics enters at the lowest level, and necessarily in a nonlinear system will percolate and become ever more important as you move up. Once you say there's uncertainty, but, but, but what about you know we talked about a, a cell with with chlorophyll and harvesting uh, photons, but what about in, inert ob objects, of tables, sofas? Quantum well, mechanics is every place. You have quantum mechanics, but not collapses necessarily. The quantum mechanical evolution by the Schrodinger equation occurs ubiquitously. Sure. All these things are evolving in that way. Right. But that evolution, the evolution that's described by the Schrodinger equation, only describes the evolution of potentialities. It doesn't give you the, uh, doesn't answer the question of what is the question which you need which is associated with the event. When does the collapse occur? Okay, so when you ask that question about me, this single cell with, with chlorophyll, or this table, what are the three different answers that you get when you ask that exact question? Well, I could imagine that in the table, there's essentially no collapses, that the, and, and that's quite compatible with quantum mechanics, that there's no collapse in an inert, unliving system. Okay. This example of the chlorophyll suggests that once you get life, at least, Collapses are important, and so we'd say, and collapses then are, and in this chlorophyll case, it actually did, allows the uh, the collection of light to be much more efficient than it could otherwise would otherwise be, and so the uh, suggestion there is once you get life, there's going to be uh, uh, collapses are going to be occurring, this and therefore an element, even and however an element small, of, right, of right. consciousness, and which would then grow as the system becomes more and more complex.